Whenever you set up distance, there's like a few like global like variables or attributes you need to be thinking about. You need a corner, you need good LOS, which sounds obvious, but the LOS essentially needs for you to be able to your Zen to do damage. And you need LOS of essentially like your DPS and whatnot so that you can give them resources and of like the enemy team so you can discord them and hit them. The enemy team would be somewhere like over here, for instance. Then on top of that, you need distance from angles, which I'll explain in a second. Then you need uh, first good rotation options. And then as fifth one, what you also need is you should be at your own angle. So you shouldn't hopefully be stacked. So you should be your own angle. Okay. So now we're going to talk about setups and we're going to break these down into like two basic situations just to keep it very simple is the question of, um, well, question of distance. So I just set up at sort of a distance for your back line and then a setup where you're so essentially setting up close, close, which inherently means you're setting up close with your back line. You're probably going to brawl and I'll give an example in a second. Distance means you're probably playing more for that spam at least at the start. So what do I mean by brawl? So normally when you're looking to set up close and I'll, let's say the enemy team is looking to push in like this, say the payload is over here and let's say you are yellow. So in this situation, let's say you really want to hit them, you know, in this kill box right over here and your ball's like ready to go, maybe hiding somewhere here, your tracers, I don't know, your ball's here, tracers up here. Um, and you're like, okay, we're going to hit them really, really, really early. So for this to happen, your backline needs to be postured up so that they can sort of pinch or hit them really early. So for instance, you can maybe have your Brig plus Zen over here, and then again, have maybe your Ash off angle. Um, and your Diva could just be chilling and like holding space or whatnot, or even with them. Um, and why this works is because when you actually go aggro like this, you're very close, so it's harder for the enemy team to kite. And if they have speed, they need to take that into account. But most, if you're playing Mirror or playing against Winston Comp, but they won't have speed. So they can't kite necessarily. And normally when you push really aggressive, you have some aggressive ult to go in with, like Rally or Trance. Preferably you don't like to use Trance at the start of fight because we value like Zen Discord, excuse me, and damage. Um, but normally Rally is a really big one. Or maybe you just have Flux and uh, Mines or something and you just really want to commit and go really early. So what you would do is you set up your backline right over here and you'd say, okay, we're going to go. Ball hits, right? Your backline, your brick gets orb, and you sort of just run at them. And you just go really in. Now, there's a few problems that can occur with this. The first thing is kiting. Your comp has no speed. So once you're in, you're in. And what that means is that you're committing. So if you rally in and, you know, maybe they rally after and then they win because they rally second, you're just sort of screwed <laughs> in a very basic sense. Um, so it's really important if you are going really aggressive, you sort of understand the ebb and flow. And if you don't know what that is, you can check out my ebb and flow video. But you understand the ebb and flow and understand how many, how, like, what ults does the enemy team have? If you push them with rally, are they going to do something that just sort of like matches, like trades your ultimate, um, like another rally or maybe like a flux or something? In which case, you probably don't want to do this. You'd probably want to play a bit further back and like play a bit slower. But if you know they don't have anything or you're sort of ready for that for some reason, maybe you go in with rally, they flux, and then maybe you trance for some reason and then you keep going. Not saying that's a good play because it's really not. But let's, for some reason, you have that plan, you do that. Uh, and you just keep going and you win, sure, right? So just sort of understand that when you're setting up close, you're sort of committing really hard, you can't kite, um, and you need to understand the enemy ultimates. And while you're doing this, it's really nice because your Ash can have an off angle, uh, your Ball Tracer should also have an off angle, and your Diva sort of normally, like your Diva can come from an off angle too, your Diva can also sort of somewhat stack with you as well, needed. And that's really powerful because if you think about it, if you're rallying in and your ball slams plus dynamite and tracer follow up and you're rallying in and you've got discord damage, uh, you can easily like blow one or two targets up really fast. So this is the example of like going in really early and being like sort of really aggressive. Now, the other example is probably the one I advocate a lot and explain a lot is um, when you sort of play distance. Uh, so I'll give an example like this. Uh, let's say a lot of people normally play over here. So let's normally you play Sigma on this map. So Sigma, uh, Brig, Zen. So a lot of people normally put their backline over here. Uh, Tracer will play. I like 
I'll put my ash over here or on top. I'm just giving you both options. And then maybe tracer over here. And then ball would maybe play this side of the map. Something like this, because Omega's there. You can also swap these both around or put them both over here. Um, this is actually probably not the best side for ball to play. I think tracer's actually a bit better there, but it's fine. Actually, I honestly prefer... Yeah, ball, ball's better here. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too, too much into logic why, but yeah, so this is essentially like the move, right? And what I'm getting at now is how, how do I know this is a good spot for my back line? And for people who watch my stream, they've probably heard this like a shit ton of times, but like whenever you set up distance, there's like a few like global, like variables or attributes you need to be thinking about. You need a corner, you need good LOS which sounds obvious, but the LOS essentially needs for you to be able to your Zen to do damage. And you need LOS of essentially like your DPS and whatnot so that you can give them resources and of like the enemy team so you can discord them and hit them. The enemy team would be somewhere like over here, for instance. Then on top of that, you need distance from angles, which I'll explain in a second. Then you need, uh, so this is one I don't mention too much. Well, you need like first good rotation options. That was the one I don't talk about that much, good rotation options. And then as fifth one, what you also need is you should be at your own angle. So you shouldn't hopefully be stacked. So you should be your own angle. So what I mean by that is like, I want my ball taking one angle, tracer taking an angle, my backline another angle, and I want my ash another angle. So we have four angles right now, technically. So corner is sort of common sense. Good LOS is easy. Distance from angles is a bit weird. So what do I mean by distant by angles? So before I even go into this, the whole concept with ball comp and something that's just very basic is my always my goal is these two things. I want to try and prevent an enemy team from killing me. And if I can prevent them, then I can engage after. If I can't prevent them, then my goal is to absorb and then engage after. So um, now, obviously, you can also forget all of these. And sometimes you can just engage first, which is a concept of setting up close, which we talked about earlier. Um, but if we're playing distance, then these two things are probably going to come into value, which is you're going to hopefully prevent them from engaging on you. But if they do, then what do you do? So the first thing is it's just constant of distance from angles. And what this sort of gets at is sort of how to position so that you sort of know wherever they come from, your break can react and hopefully like flail the ball away, stun the ball. Your Zen can put a discord on him and do damage, enough damage that hopefully takes off his armor so the ball like is forced to use E or like really low and maybe gets forced out. So if you sort of see this positioning here, like there's, there's not really any way, even in here, the ball could come, which your Brig wouldn't see and your Brig wouldn't be able to sort of like bash and react or flail him or Zen wouldn't be able to put a discord on. So this is the concept of distance from angles. Okay? Like it's very hard for someone just to sneak up on you. Uh, now the other one is good rotation options. Oh, there's a lot of things in here. Let me just clear this out a bit. So good rotation options, and it'll go into a little, little section later when we talk about like understanding how to push forward. But essentially, good rotation op options mean that you're essentially able to make a play. So it's like anyone can always obviously press the W key and just go into the enemy team. But sometimes more more than that, you need like to be able to take aggressive angles so you can keep spamming them while being safe. Maybe sometimes you go wide like this, or you go wide like this, because maybe there is somebody over here and you can't see them because of the rocks. So you're going to go over here so you can shoot them. Or maybe like same thing over here and you want to go wide like this to shoot them like this and maintain more distance. Um, so being have, having sort of these rotation options that allow you to sort of take angles is really strong. And I'll give you another example that I think a lot of people know of, hopefully, is uh, Oasis. So... If you play right over here, you have distance from angles. Literally, wherever someone comes from, you can see them. Like, it's very, very difficult. Okay, I'm going to delete that, all that now. Now, the other concept is the rotation options. So, obviously, yes, you've got a corner. Obviously, you've got good LOS. That's also there. But the other thing now is this concept of rotations. So, if you want to rotate, you can go over here and push. You can keep going. You could actually rotate like this. You could rotate into the team if they're over here. You could rotate far wide left. That's a little awkward. But what I'm getting at is you have sort of have these rotation options that allow you to get different angles, which allow you to get value. Now, why are these angles important? I'll quickly talk about it. I think I'll talk about it later too. Um, but when you go forward, you can essentially get hit. When you sort of take these angles, you're still maximizing your distance from the enemy team. So it's harder for you to get hit in a very simple sense. Okay. So that's the good rotation options. We talked about the angles. 
So this should hopefully explain like sort of a general understanding of positioning for your backline so that if you sort of fulfill these attributes in a global sense, you can apply them to almost any map, uh, then you will sort of be in a good spot. Something else that it's also I'd probably add, uh, and I sort of forgot, I guess, here, and I'm going to add it right now, is this concept of like verticality. So we'll do six verticality. Uh, high ground like this is really risky if you don't have a shield and they have a hit scan. If you've, let's say you're playing a diva and they have a Hanzo, you're up here, your Zen could just get doinked, and that's not going to be pretty. So a very basic rule for, like I say, for like flex supports or like backline. Whoops. Just I'm trying to clear all of this. There's too many things on here. It's a very basic rule I just say is that. Um, so rule six, we'll bring it over here. But rule six essentially is check if they have some type of one tap. If they have a one tap, then ask yourself, do you have a shield? If you have a shield, then sure you can play more high ground. Because then you can have more you can like have more uptime because you have a shield and you're not gonna get tapped. If you don't have a shield and they have a one tap, then you probably want to try playing low ground. As you can like if the person pressures you, you can easily play corners and it's harder to get one tapped and you've got better uptime. Uh if they have no one tap, then do whatever you want. Like you're you're a lot more free. Uh okay, because you like you can play high ground, sure, like you get tapped, like you're not gonna die, so it's okay. You can just back up and play a corner like you would as if you were on low ground. So verticality, that's something okay, something that's very, very, very important. I'm just gonna add that right over here. Uh, okay. So now we're gonna go into like the next topic, which is different ways to sort of engage. Uh I guess we'll do it on this. I'm going to clear this. So there's different ways. Actually, we'll use this one to explain it. I think it'll be easier. So there's different ways to engage. Uh, and actually, we'll start here, and then I'll move there. So different ways to engage. So straight up, like I think a lot of the ones that people, I'll just put them down, is sort of like Wing in, like just go straight in. Like orb your brig and just W key into the enemy team. The oh, other one that I sort of already explained is sort of taking a wide angle. Um, and there's another one which is not as intuitive, but it's actually the value of forcing point. So let me first talk about the value of forcing point. And I'll use uh so looks eight, let's see. All right, um, so I'll use Voskaya for this because a lot of people play Voskaya and they don't fully understand this concept. So um, when you're playing Skaya, when you're on attack and a lot of the enemy team is up here or wherever they are, here, here, doesn't really matter. Um, they could, hell, they could even be on somewhere over here. Uh, and you're rotating and you sort of say like, okay, we're gonna take the high ground. My ball tracer is gonna hit the enemy team. Now, when you're in this situation, your ball tracer is hitting the enemy team. Once you have your backline set up, so I'll use this. So you have your backline, let's say they, they, if they have a hit scan, then you want to play low ground. If they don't have a hit scan, then you play high ground. Um, and you're running D.Va here, so that's why you have no shield. So let's say they have hit scans, so you're playing low ground. So your Briggs ends over here. Now, when you f your diva will go force point, and when this happens, your ball tracer is going to soft hit the high ground, or your ball tracer hits soft hits soft hits the high ground first, then your diva forces point. Now, what ends up happening here is the enemy team has to make a decision. They're like, "Oh crap, their diva's on point. We're going to give ticks." And when this happens, the enemy team might have to send somebody to point, and if they send someone to point, your brig, uh, your zen puts a discord on that person, and then your brig shoots it, and that person can die. As well as the fact that you have an ash, um, who should be you know, in a good position, an off angle position, they can be playing high, they can maybe play playing, playing over here, they could be back here, right? And that person's also dishing damage to the point. So whoever gets baited to the point by your diva just gets discorded and rolled. And what'll end up happening is that sure the enemy team might try and hit your back line, but your diva can peel you and you should be okay, because you're in a pretty good spot where again it's hard to be honestly hit. If your break just watches the side too, you can sort of see everything. Um but 
what will happen also is when your ball tracer hits, it doesn't even have to be your ball tracer when you're soft hitting to distract them. It could just be your ball. And then it could also be that your tracer is just chilling over here. And when that person drops, now there's a tracer, an ash, and a brig, uh, a brig zen, and a diva. So it's like four people sort of screwing this person on point. So you're not actually like W keying into them or like doing anything. You're baiting them. So essentially you're baiting the enemy team into like into like to going to point into your Briggs Ends LOS and they essentially lose off that. So it sort of again just looks like this. Oh, I don't want Diva there. Diva. Oh, maybe like Tracer, Ash, something like this, and your ball is hitting their high ground. It's like something like this, and then they have to send somebody down. Maybe it's their own D.Va, but if, even if it is, that D.Va is just going to get hard rolled. So your ball basically takes the pressure of their whole entire backline, which seems like a 1v3, which even if it's a short period of time, that's still valuable. And this is one way of approaching it. Obviously, you can add alts on this, and you can sort of imagine how you can sort of zone point. Maybe you throw the bob on point here. Maybe you, uh, if you don't have bob, maybe you uh, flux the enemy team if they drop. Maybe you rally. Maybe you mine the enemy team when they drop. There's a whole bunch of options. Okay, so this is an example of like forcing a point. The other example um, or concept is this thing that we talked about earlier, which is taking a wide angle. So if the enemy team is like playing over here and you're sort of standing here like, man, dude, like I, I can't see them. I don't know what to do. This is boring. As Zenyatta, I want to shoot things. Instead of just walking, like sort of being like, oh, dude, let's W key into them. And then all of a sudden they're like, yes, yes. And red team is like, yes, yes, they W key in open space. The ball tracer is like, yes, let's kill them. Ball tracer hits you guys, and the enemy team comes in and sort of just sandwiches your backline. Your backline just explodes, and you're dead because you 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 can't really walk as a backline till you actually understand where their ball tracer is or they hit. And we'll talk about that in a second. In fact, let's actually talk about that right now. So why is W King in just bad? It's bad because if the ball tracer is still alive, you walk into open space, you essentially are in a kill box. The enemy ball tracer can just kill you. Now, there are some exceptions to when it's okay to W key in um, if you don't know where the ball tracer is. And those exceptions would be like rally, maybe trance, um, or like let's say that you know their ball is really low, or you maybe you know their ball is dead. And why am I emphasizing on ball? Why am I not caring about tracer, sombra, and stuff? It's because if you have a diva, tracer doesn't do that much. If you have a, like, like tracer sombra, it's not that big a deal. It's a slam that displaces you. And a solo tracer, you have a brig, you should be okay. Tracer sombra, and then like you got a brig zen, but you also have a diva, should still be okay. Uh, so if you have ultimates that help you take space for your backline, then you're probably going to be fine. Rally, ball tracer is not going to do anything. Trance, probably not going to do anything either. So that's sort of when it's okay to W key in and sort of just go into them. But keep in mind, the enemy team can kite. And I'm not going to go too much in and flow, but they can just kite your aggression and then push back in with their own ults. Um, another way it's really risky, but you can still go for it, is if, let's say, like your ball is like, I'm going to hit them, I'm going to mine them here, and uh, you, you should walk, we should walk. And because your ball says you're going to mine them, then like you're like, okay, we're mining them, so I'm not going to go this way, I'm just going to go in. And you just hope that because the mines happen, maybe the ball tracer doesn't hit you in rotation, or you know, you're know you okay. So it's really risky, and you can maybe make an assumption, but the, what I will say is the longer the distance you cover that you rotate, the higher risk it is. If it's a short distance, that's probably not going to be that you're probably going to be okay. Long distance, that's really risky. So instead, like I said, solve this problem when you don't have rally, trance, or the enemy ball is low, or you've killed the ball, or stuff like that, or you know the ball is just out of it. You do what again, what's called disrotation. You take a, an angle, and from here, you're still safe. You still have your corner. You still have your like five to six things, te technically six. You've got corner. You've got your distance from angles. A little bit less here. This is more of a different type of area. Um, then you've got your LOS, a little bit less LOS, but it still exists. Um, and then you've got you got good rotation options because you can go there, you can still go in, and you can go back. Uh, as well as uh, you have, uh, we we there's no verticality in the situation, it doesn't matter. And then you also have um, you also technically have your own angle because you're you're normally playing flankers here, so your flankers can play here, and you can give them resources. So technically, you have your own angle. So here. Right, and then if your tracer or sombra are back here, you can give them resources, and your ball tracer sort of hit the enemy team, and then you can go in, or you can just keep spamming. So, in quick summary, I sort of went through these sort of fast. Is there are sort of three ways, right, to 
both point is W straight in, taking a wide angle, or forcing like forcing point. And there are definitely a few more, but uh, these are the basic ones that I think like it's really important for teams to know. Um, understand again that when you're W keying in, uh, you need to understand that the enemy ball team tracer can hit you, and it's really risky. So a lot of the times, it's sometimes you just stay on your corner, chill, the let the enemy ball tracer hit you, and when they hit you, you can essentially just live. So if you just literally play right over here, ball comes in, tracer comes in, and break plus Zen plus Diva. Your Diva turns around, DMs you. Uh, you stun the ball, you know, you discord the ball, ball goes out, uh, tracer gets forced out, and you're like, okay, ball tracer is low, you know, we don't, we don't have like a massive distance to cover just this much, let's walk in and let's go brawl. Now, if you had to walk in from here all the way to like here, the problem is what's going to happen is, is the ball will get low, sure, but he'll go get the mega, and then he'll come back and hit you somewhere here. So you have to understand that like, based off, you know, the distance you're going, you're at a time limit, and this ball might cycle back and hit you. Okay, so again, understand the W in straight thing, uh, and understand that if you have rally, trance, um, or the ball is low or ball is dead, then you don't have to be much scared, and those are sort of why it's called triggers. And understand the concept of taking a wide angle, and hopefully you guys understand also forcing point. Okay, now the last topic we're going to go into is the topic that I, again, I think a lot of people struggle with, even contenders players, in my opinion. Uh, is the concept of actually living enemy engages. So we talked about, like, very briefly earlier, talked about this concept of, like, you know, when we're playing distance, we want to try and prevent... Oops. Want to try and prevent their engage, and, if, and you know, if we can prevent their engage, then we engage ourselves. Um, if we can't prevent their engage, then we want to try and absorb. Their engage, and then engage after. So I'm going to go with the assumption now that they have an alt and we, you know, we weren't able to prevent their engage. So now we're going straight to absorb. Okay. So now my question is, or sort of the way of thinking about it. Um, actually, before we say that, like preventing, if I need to make this even more clear, how you prevent again is having that good positioning with those, you know, four to five things and then being able to pressure people so they can't actually get like you sh discord them early, you hit them before they come. So for instance, right over here, let's say you're playing here and this ball is coming in here, and as, as Zen, you sort of see him, like when he's right over here, you slap a Discord on him, start shooting him. By the time ball gets even closer, like over here, he's like, no armor, your break bashes him, he's sort of just, he's, got, he's you know, just dead. Or he realizes over here, he's just like, man, I already have no armor, I'm really low, and like everyone's staring at me, I'm just going to go out. And he just gets out. Uh, same concept sort of can apply to Winston. If Winston's trying to close distance on you, you discord him really early. Your Diva sort of holds space on him looking for a six man. And uh, so it'd be something like, let's say, like their six man is trying to push you here. Your Diva's on high ground. Um, and then maybe your backline's playing like here, for Zen. And you pressure the Winston really early with discord. Your Diva tries to drop on him, pressure him too, forces out and breaks, like, kills his uh, armor. Um, and your, I don't know, maybe your tracer also over here is shooting him, your ball is shooting him. Preferably, they should be swapped. So, ball over here, tracer here. Sorry for my handwriting. I'm a little tired. Ball, tracer. And your tracer shooting the, like, Winston, your ball is shooting the Winston, and the ball, get, the Winston's getting so low, and he's like half HP, and he's like, I can't go in. He jumps out, 